the real American wrestling critics like to pay tribute to Chief J. Strongbow. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. That's right, America. It is Easter time in America. In America, for Easter this year, I am not going to color an Easter egg, but I am going to color myself as an egg. America! Easter is celebrated in many different ways! There's some who celebrate that the man rode on the third day, that he not see what the great God wanted to do. There are many other ways! There is the hair and the moon, and there is a Passover. But in America, we celebrate Easter by having Easter egg hunt that the Easter Bunny with. There is an Easter egg hunt at Ori House and they bring the kids around and they make them find the Easter eggs because in America we love Easter eggs. We love them so much that we have Easter eggs on Easter and we tell our kids to go around and find those Easter eggs so I am covering myself in eggs because I love Easter in America. Easter is on the day that Jim Garrison interviewed the man Craig Bartram, that is the man Craig Shaw, or is rumored to be the man Craig Shaw, who is one of the conspirators behind the Kennedy assassination. But America, in my least time, is springtime and it's time for a take. Me out to the ball game, and everybody's happy, man, because the sun is coming out, and you look good, man. Everyone looks good. Yeah, everyone looks good around Easter Sun because the rabbits come out, and they're fertility, and that's why we have the rabbits and the chocolate and the eggs. Because on Easter, we like to have eggs. I'm the Austin Mac Warrior, and I'm not afraid to have eggs on Easter, because as you can see, the ultimate American warrior is an Easter egg. And now, it's time for the real American wrestling critics. Special on Easter Sunday in America. I did not forget the chocolate. <laughs> Hello, America. It's me, Dan America, and this is Bob the 86er. Happy Easter, America. Happy. Stanley Cup Playoff Times America. As you can see, we both got playoff beards and we're representing our favorite NHL teams. And if this ends up being the picture for the Stanley Cup Finals, well, you heard it first from the real American wrestling critics, Dan America and Bob the 86er. And happy opening day, America, especially Boston. Do you have anything to say to the world, Bob, about the... Opening day for baseball, America's favorite pastime, although I kind of think it's football, but how about those Mets? Three and oh. But, America, I am one of those guys. So, what do you say we get to the wrestling? Face and heel! America, it's time for face and heel. I know I said I was going to do the words and actions, but... I haven't. It's a little hard to do that when you have a one-month-old boy screaming all night long in your ear. Try to calm him down, but the only thing that calms him down is you take him downstairs and you walk in freaking circles. Bob, what'd you think of Raw? Well, you know what? Before I get into Raw, I'm just going to have to say, your excuses for not having words and actions on this Big Show Boss Man bad. 
Thanks. So, what did you think of Raw? I'm giving Raw a face, America. Raw is getting a face. Why? Many reasons. Let, let's talk about the amazing returns. Lord Tensai, A-Train, Brock Lesnar, what did he do? What did he do? He took out Cena. I, on the other hand, give Raw a face as well. However, it's rare. And the reason why I give Raw, and Raw a face is because they had some good matches. I enjoyed the Triple Threat match. I enjoyed the Miz vs. Zack Ryder, pretty much because the better man won. I didn't so much enjoy the Cody Rhodes match because Big Show came down and played the Cody Rhodes disappointing thing. And then Cody got kicked in the face and pinned. Um, the Divas are a joke. CM Punk vs. Mark Henry could have been a lot better than it was until Jericho had to come down. and That was alcohol abuse. Yes, it was. But other than that, this Jericho CM Punk storyline is still Big Show Boss Man bad. However, I did appreciate the fact that they did it in an attitude way, but it was still Big Show Boss Man bad. Didn't really care for much of what The Rock said. Yeah, yeah, he's going to come back and win the title, whatever. Um, the squash match between Lord Tensai and poor Alex Riley. Love seeing Lord Tensai back, and out of respect for the man, I'm not going to refer to him as what we know him as. It's because he's coming back to us as Lord Tensai. And until the man tells us it's okay to refer to him as A-words... I'm going to refer to him as Lord Tensai. Love the Claw Man. Way to bring it back. Other than that, I would like to point out, hmm? before we continue, I, Bob the 86er, was the first follower for Lord Tensai on Twitter. I think I was like the sixth or seventh, but Bob was the first. Know that, American wrestling fans. Foreign wrestling fans can know it too. But first, the American wrestling fans. So, Raw got a face from us. But it's okay that we went on that long about Raw. Because, Bob, what'd you think of TNA? Well, I seen it with my eyes. But I can't necessarily say I watched it. Uh, TNA, your probation period has expired. And I'm going to have to, uh, well inform you that you are a big show boss man bad and while I will tolerate certain segments of big show boss man bad on Raw Smackdown I will not tolerate an entire show of big show boss man bad therefore I am no longer watching TNA you even got the black cat there TNA TNA Jeff Hardy Kurt Angle had potential then you blow it Everything else on the show was... The knockouts have sunk to diva levels. The tag team division was missing in action again. Hulk Hogan came back. And Ric Flair was there. Woo! And so was Eric Bischoff. Props was to about... them for uh, mentioning that Ric Flair now has two rings. Yeah, true that. But TNA got a heel. SmackDown, however, you all know how we feel about SmackDown, and I think that SmackDown made its own <coughs> uh, emphasis. Sorry, got a little excited because I'm about to mention Ryback. What a awesome debut. Doing things in the ring that we thought they didn't do anymore, and then he did something that we haven't seen before. I am very excited about this guy. I want to see what he's going to do. But that's not the only reason why SmackDown gets a face. They get another face because Randy Orton and Kane came on and put on the match that they should have given at WrestleMania, but they gave it at SmackDown. And because they gave it on SmackDown, SmackDown gets the bigger face than WrestleMania because the Kane-Randy Orton match was that badass. How'd you feel about SmackDown? I absolutely agree. With the face, uh, Ryback, I think I'm just as excited as you are. He's my pick to take the Intercontinental title off of the Big Show because I think he could own the Big Show. Yes, he's that great. 
this is just another reason why SmackDown gets a face, because we got all this stuff going on, and we still had time for a Sheamus Alberto Del Rio match, which ended in Eddie style, and there was even an Eddie chant going on as the match ended that way, which gives us, we give a big thumbs up to. And is there anything more that we can say about SmackDown? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Well, I was disappointed in the Divas match, but, I mean, that's just to be expected. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. uh, I'm also disappointed that we didn't see any tag team wrestling on SmackDown either. We haven't seen the tag team titles on TV since when? But the same goes for TNA. So, does all wrestling hate tag teams now? Where'd the tag teams go? I like tag teams. I know I'm not the only person that likes tag teams. Where are the tag teams? But I think that pretty much wraps up our face and heel for this week. And if you haven't been paying attention or if you fast forward to the end or something, I don't know who would do that. It went raw, face, TNA, heel, smackdown, big face. Yeah, so it, dude, do it! And now it's time for Salad America. Now, Q&A. Not again. Now it's time for the cheap pops. Bob, who's your cheap pop of the week? Well, I started to do random cheap pops of the week because I thought it'd be more fun. And, uh, well, this week's cheap pop is going to go to Danny Bowes, or known as Lifeguard123468 on Twitter. For, uh, he thinks he's kind of a big deal, and, well, now you are because you just got cheap pop by a real American wrestling critic. And my cheap pop of the week goes to the wrestling fan on Twitter, Eliza Shakira, for being such a freaking weirdo. Seriously, some of the things that you tweet just make me wonder, like, what's going on with the kids nowadays? I mean, that's not how the way kids acted in our days, or back in the day, back in the old school, that's so cool. I, I, I don't know, man. I just remember growing up on Crossfire and the Ninja Turtles. I was never really good at Crossfire. I lost all the movies. Signature! Alright America, it's time for this week's signatures. Bob, what's your signature? Well... If I really want to think about it, we touched base on it somewhat. The tag team wrestling really needs to push. Like we said, there has not been a tag team match featuring Epico and Primo, the tag team champions, except for the dark match at WrestleMania. Heard it was great. I don't want to hear that it was great. I want to see that it was great. Why didn't we get that at WrestleMania? I uh -huh. mean... And, and TNA, part of your reason why I'm not watching you is because you have a great tag team division, but... You're not doing nothing with them. Why didn't I see a tag team title match or a tag team match featuring your tag team champion? I didn't. I want to start seeing tag team wrestling. You have a bunch of guys that you're not doing anything with because you just pushed like uh, like 30 guys at once. Start forming tag teams out of them. I bet that The Miz could make an awesome tag team with someone. I agree with Bob's signature. We want tag teams. And now, America, it's time for my signature which is the same thing it was last week and the same thing it will be every week until it gets done. I'm talking about the Cena walkout. People have been going on and on about how great a crowd Miami was. Yeah, but let us tell you a little something. In 1992, Ric Flair won the Royal Rumble at Albany, New York. No Mercy, forget the date, but Kurt 2000. Angle, 2000, that's why we have him here. No Mercy, 2000, Albany, New York. Kurt Angle takes the title off The Rock. When was New Year's Revolution? 2006. New Year's Revolution, 2006, Edge takes the title off of Cena. 
Let's Big Show throws Mick Foley halfway across the stage onto the Mound of Dirt in Albany, New York. Cursed and only ever tag team buried alive match. Miami, you got a lot of pop on Twitter, but I think it's because this is a cool thing to do. Because any real wrestling fan knows that Albany, New York is wrestling town. That's right. Ever. Washington, D.C. If you really are our nation's capital. If you're upset because the Redskins really haven't gotten you anywhere. If you're upset because Ovechkin and the Capitals don't really like to win the cup that often. If you're ex upset because your baseball team is kind of non-existent and don't even got a basketball team. But uh, the Wizards. Really? Oh yeah, Michael Jordan coached them. Wow. <laughs> Show us how relevant, how relevant they are. You can go down in sports history still, Washington. You could be the first audience to do the Cena walkout. Barack Obama, President, Mr. President, Cena walkout. However, something occurred to me, and that is, the fans haven't done the Cena walkout yet. I've been telling both coasts, I've been telling the middle of America, the we Cena walkout. We even accidentally told Canada to. Yeah, we accidentally told Canada to do it too. And nobody has done the Cena walkout yet. I keep saying that Albany will do it. However, I've heard some rumors that they're going to go with a Cena disappearing act. And maybe the word Cena walkout don't pertain to the audience but John Cena himself. Cena, you going to pull a disappearing act? Well, Cena, why don't you be the first to do the Cena walkout? You can always say that you beat us to the punch, but you know what, Cena? It doesn't matter if you beat us to the punch. It doesn't matter how long you disappear for, because I'm going to keep doing this I am going to keep telling the WWE Universe to walk out on you. So, even if you do beat me to the punch, Cena, and you are the first to Cena walk out, when you come back, I'm just going to punch you back. Because I will be saying the same thing every week until it is done. Because we don't just love to hate him. We want him gone, and bowing him is not enough, because then they will think that we love to hate him. WWE Universe, we need the Cena walkout. Triple Threat WrestleMania for the Hello, America. It's me, Dan America. Bob the 86er, and Maria Helena America. America, this week on the Real American Wrestling Critics, we have a special triple threat finisher for our review of WrestleMania 28. It was the 28th WrestleMania, right? Indeed. And it was. That's good. I got it right. So, America... Judging on our WrestleMania pre-show, you might be able to tell that we're not extremely happy with WrestleMania, but we did watch it, we kind of liked it, and now it's time for our opinion on WrestleMania. Daniel Bryan, Sheamus. Maria, I'm going to ask you first every time just to get it out of the way. What did you think of Daniel Bryan, Sheamus? I like the Sheamus one because I hate Daniel Bryan because he's an annoying guy who looks like Joe Camel. Daniel Bryan's an annoying guy that looks like Joe Camel. Okay. Bob, Daniel Bryan, Sheamus? Well, I'm going to have to uh, give it a face. Now, while I strongly disagree with the 18-second match, I think in the long run it does a great deal of good for Daniel Bryan. While some people might find him annoying, I think that's actually part of what makes him so great is because he's kind of like... Chris Jericho and Stone Cold, they were annoying, but man, you got behind them. And I'm going to have to agree, I give it a face, because from a business perspective, they preserved something in that match that they had to preserve, 
and that match had to be in order for them to preserve it. I know that not a lot of wrestling fans like it when they have to do what they have to do, but they did what they had to do, and I give it a face. What did you think of Randy Orton Kane? I don't like Kane's new outfit, how he doesn't have his little, little strap. Um, so I like Randy Orton, and I forget if he won or not. Bob, what'd you give Randy Orton Kane? Randy Orton Kane, for me, is actually going to get a heel. While I think that the match should have been a uh, no disqualification match, the match we got on SmackDown was what I was expecting. However, uh, I think time restraint also had a lot to do with it. Um, the choke slam from the second rope was awesome. And, and the fact that a heel got a clean win, especially at WrestleMania, was pretty great. But I think the match itself could have been a lot better, so I'm going to have to give it a heel. I give it a face because they did what they had to do in the time that they had to do it. And it ended with a choke slam from the second turnbuckle. And I'm giving it a face because the guy that you didn't expect to win won. And like I said, they were time restricted because of some reason. And they did all that they could do for that match. Um, so, How'd you feel about Cody Rhodes' big show? I don't like Cody Rhodes' face, so I'm glad Big Show won. Bob, how'd you feel about Cody Rhodes' Big Show? I'm gonna, I'm kind of leaning on the same thing with uh, Randy Orton Kane. However, this time I'm going to give it a face because it's pretty much what I expected. Uh, I pretty much felt that Big Show was going to win the belt. Uh, this opens the door for Cody to get an eventual world title push, or at least compete for the world title, which is always a plus. I think he's ready for it. And it gives Big Show something to do. Uh, you know, they had the end of an era match, which we will you know, discuss about later, but I personally don't feel like that was the end of an era because Big Show has been around for so long. So, giving a veteran like that the uh, lower to belt, is going to be a positive for the up-and-comers who are going to get that belt off of them. I'm going to have to disagree because I give it a heel because I felt that Cody and Big Show could have done more in the ring, but because of the time restriction, it made the match got be speedy, short to a point that was a point that they didn't have to make, but they made it anyway. But they could have made a better point. They could have really showcased Cody a little bit more, but they didn't. And that's why I hated the match, is because that's not the Cody that I look forward to seeing every now and again. But of course, well, he went for multiple beautiful disasters, which was... You know, fun because it was just like, all right, Cody's got a strategy here. He's just going to kick the Big Show in the face until he goes down. But then Big Show botches a spear that takes him down. And this was after, like, maybe, like, a minute and a half of str strong striking, some strong grappling, but no submissions, barely anything. Cody and the Big Show are better than that. Cody and the Big Show could put on a better show than that. Because of the time restriction, I gave it a heel. Maria, Rock Cena. I like that the Rock one. Any other thoughts? Cena does look good, but I like the Rock better. Whose haircut do you like more? Well, obviously Cena, because Rock is bald. Do you like the Rock's goatee? Yes. Okay. Your targeted audience. Bob, how'd you feel about Rock Cena? Heel. Uh, well, as it was nice to see the Rock. It was not nice to see Cena. Uh, the Rock was gassed after about maybe five minutes. You could, you could tell he wasn't completely ready, which makes me wonder. He had a year to get ready for this match. you think he would have been more able to go than five minutes. Though in those five minutes, he was showing us Rocky Maivia, which was a nice flashback. However, John Cena had to carry the match, and... John Cena is kind of like a Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan could only carry a match so much because he can only do so much with the limited moves. Cena shouldn't be carrying a match. When he has to, that's what you get. It was. It should not have been the main event by any means. 
it was a, an attraction, yes, because it was Rock, it was Cena, whatever. It was not the main event. The Rock Cena match got a heel for me. Not just because they had these 25 minute long intros. I mean, it's great that they gave that Make a Wish uh, kid, you know, a chance to perform live at WrestleMania. I didn't really appreciate his rap that much, and, you know, he wasn't really that good, but it's great that the Make a Wish Foundation can grant somebody a wish like that. And, you know, it was great that Miami gave The Rock such a big ovation because he's from there and Albany's is a better wrestling city than Miami. But the match itself, you know, props to The Rock that he came back to wrestling. I agree, he was very visibly winded, but he was still giving it his all. But John Cena, I mean, we had people at a WrestleMania party that don't watch wrestling regularly and... They were making fun of Cena because you could actually see him calling for his cues during the match. And, you know, Rock having to carry Cena, and Cena can't wrestle, which was just what I was expecting from this match, which is why I don't think it was, supposed to, it was a worthy main event. It wasn't the main event. The match was a stinker. Other than that, at a WrestleMania party, it made a cat and a person throw up. Yeah, a feline and a human being vomited at our WrestleMania party during the Rock Cena match. Other than that, everyone was on their phones texting. I mean, you know, it was like, okay, The Rock's back. He's a movie star, and now he's back to wrestle at WrestleMania. But he's wrestling John Cena. John Cena can't make a match interesting. He can't. The rest of the WrestleMania card, Bob... The Divas Tag Team Match, Beth Phoenix and E versus Kelly Kelly and uh, Chick from Extra, uh, Maria Mendoz. Maria, what would you think of that one? I thought it was cool that one lady had my name. Okay, um, I gave it a heel. I'm not even going to comment on the match. The match was terrible. Uh, Chris Jericho versus CM Punk for the WWE Championship. Maria? I really like CM Punk. He has pretty eyes. He's come a long way with his tattoos. Um, before I graduated high school, I was also straight edge, so that kind of relates to me in a way. And he's just such a nice speaker. What do you think of his hair? Love it. I'm going to do Donovan's hair once he does grow his hair out like that. Once he gets more hair, obviously. Are you dumb? He has really pretty eyes, too. They're like greenish brown. Bob? What did you think of CM Punk Jericho at WrestleMania? Face, it was an excellent technical <sighs> match, especially towards the end. I thought it kind of started off a little slow. Uh, I honestly kind of thought that Jericho might get the win. However, CM Punk did, and I it was a surprise that I actually enjoyed it. I gave the match a face. I appreciated the effort, although I think that the storyline is Big Show Boss Man bad. I thought it was very interesting what they did with the match. Great display of technical wrestling. I could have used more strikes and a little bit more length to the match, and I would have appreciated if they picked up the tempo. However, it was on a time restriction because I've seen a rock, but I still give the match a face to see where you guys were going with that, and I appreciated it. Other than that, there was the Team Teddy vs. Team Johnny. What'd you give it? Wait. Um, I like the Team Johnny one because Johnny's a cute name. What'd you give it? <laughs> I gave it a face because I, uh, I got it. You know, it's kind of like a face, but it's a heel. Uh, I'm, in, I'm on the fence here, guys, because... I see that you have a six-on-six -six tag match, and from a storyline, okay, it, it was an okay storyline. And but may I point out, TNA, as we speak, is ripping off that storyline. That is Big Show Boss Man Bad. Yes, it is. Anyway, but I look at this as uh, you could have had an opportunity for two separate matches. You could have had Santino defend the U.S. title against David Otunga, which... Even if it was a five-minute match, it could have been something great. I think these two guys have been showing that they can put on pretty good matches, which is exactly what the U.S. title needs. And then as far as the other ten guys, money in the bank ladder match. You had 
guys like Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler, Jack Swagger, guys that like could have benefited from that. At first, I wanted to give it a heel because I agree with Bob, and that is that they had a bunch of guys that they could have easily paired off into singles matches that would have made sense and would have made a better better WrestleMania, but they had to go with this storyline to make sure that they had a storyline after WrestleMania, but then again, if they had taken the time to figure out a storyline for each guy involved in that match, then they would still have a storyline after WrestleMania to go with. So, has the writing staff of the WWE gotten lazy? And if so, if you haven't noticed, we put on a show like every week, so obviously we're not lazy. Maria, what'd you think of Undertaker vs. Triple H? I was actually really mad. Well, I had mixed feelings. I loved the fact that when the Undertaker took off his hood, he had a bit of mohawk. But I also was very, very upset that Triple H did not win. Why? I, because he's he's so pretty. He didn't win, and he's the ex, and oh, I'm sad. Bob, the Undertaker Triple H match is one that I feel was one of the best matches I've ever seen. And if you're going to disagree with me, it's because you've seen more wrestling matches than me. But this match, I felt, was a, one of the greatest matches ever because you could see the damage on the body. There is no way that you could say somebody hit, a ri hit something in their tights to make the bruises and welts that were on Triple H and The Undertaker. You could hear the crowd going crazy when the match first started because the second Undertaker threw Triple H into the turnbuckle and started wailing on him. The crowd knew it was on. The crowd knew that it was Attitude Era all over again. The crowd knew that they were really freaking going to go at it, and they did. I give this match a face, but before I run away with what I think, Bob, what do you think? I was in such a loss for words during that match. They put on the match. Now, I've heard a lot of people complaining that they didn't use the cell enough. Shut up. These two guys put on one of the greatest matches of all time. They showed everyone in the back how to do it. Shawn Michaels did exactly what I thought he was going to do. He added to the match. Now, a lot of people were complaining about that, too. He wasn't supposed to be that involved. He was the referee. But when he did get involved, it was powerful. It was emotional. You could feel everything coming together. And then to watch, after Undertaker went 20-0, and 0, to watch the three of them walk up to the stage like that, it was just awe-inspiring. I don't even know how else to describe it. That's one of those wrestling moments that I guarantee you, when they made it to the back, those people were probably bowing down to the master and the men that work with them. Just absolutely amazing. Uh, my only comment that may be negative about it, however, and it's not about the match itself, is the fact that they pegged it as end of an era. I'd like to point out that there are at least three or four guys from the Attitude Era who are still active. Big Show, Kane, Mark Henry, and Christian. That era is still alive. Now, they're not The Undertaker, and they're not Triple H. But that era is still alive. But uh, I think when its greatest if not the greatest of all time, has finally, if he has indeed, The Undertaker has finally left. I guess maybe that's what they mean by the end of an era. Maybe it's not so much the end of the Attitude Era, maybe it's the end of The Undertaker's era. Well, I hope that that's not the case. But if it is, it was a great run and a great ending. And I agree with Bob, a lot of people had some guff about this match. They thought that it was going to be, you know, to the same caliber as Foley Taker. But you know what? There was a reason why Foley Taker was Foley Taker. And that's because Mick Foley even admits himself in his book. He sucks in cage matches. 
And how he made that match good was he took all the bumps. But in this Undertaker Triple H Hell in a Cell match with Shawn Michaels, that <coughs> who blocked me on Twitter, this was a wrestling match in a Hell in a Cell. And I think it went off great. All the emotion in the match, like when Michaels super kicked Undertaker and immediately after he gets pedigreed and he kicks out, that's great. The last act of defiance. I mean, every move, every punch in that match looked painful. They were grinding it out to the very end, and you can't tell me that that wasn't the sickest thing you saw when Undertaker is holding Triple H by his hair and does that before he tombstones him for the win. And even when it was that last act of defiance in Shawn Michaels' defense, his back's turned like he just can't watch it. That's like some kind of emotion that you can't even get in a movie. That match deserves a freaking Academy Award. So America, the real American wrestling critics, and Maria give WrestleMania a face. Well, at least I give it a face. You give it a face, right? I, uh, Undertaker Triple H made the whole event a face. Maria, WrestleMania, face or heel? Face. There you go, America.